morning and welcome to a brand new week. Uh, I hope that you had a great weekend. I hope that you're ready to come together this week and have a wonderful, wonderful week of living for Christ. Uh, thank you so much for joining in this morning as we spend a few seconds in God's Word to uh, just encourage ourselves as disciples of Jesus Christ. And uh, today we're going to be looking in Ephesians 2 beginning at verse 11. And uh, you know, we hear a lot today about the lack of unity uh, in our society as Americans. You know, right now, I think we're about as divided as a people uh, as I've seen us in our lifetime. Uh, all sorts of events and things have happened that have caused great division. Uh, you know, some would say that the cracks have always been there. This, these events have just revealed them. And uh, I'm not sure I'm so cynical in my outlook, but uh, I do believe that there are evil forces at work that are dividing us intentionally. And, uh, you know, when we think about division and what tears us apart, uh, you know, one of the things that should never tear us apart is our common faith in Jesus Christ. You know, the Ephesian church uh, was dealing with division like a lot of churches that we know about today in our, in our you know, communities and, and, our, and in our world. Uh, you know, the thing, though, that was going on in Ephesus, uh, obviously, we're looking at the very birth and beginning of the church. Now, obviously, Paul had, uh, you know, went to Ephesus and planted that church, you know, probably some 60 years after the death of Jesus. Uh, so this is not, you know, imminently right on the heels of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. However, uh, you know, what the people of Ephesus were struggling with was what something that was common uh, throughout, uh, you know, the ancient world as Christianity began to spread beyond Jerusalem. It was how do you bring two very different people groups, Jews and Gentiles, together uh, with the ethnic uh, animosities that do it, that existed between them? How do these the, these two very different people groups get enfolded into the same church? Uh, you know, and, and in the letter to the Ephesian church is a very powerful treatise, if you will, on how God was taking two very different groups of people and bringing them together for his glory as the church. In fact, uh, Paul calls this the mystery. And, and really, when we read the word mystery in the Bible, it's not very, it's not like we use the word mystery. For us, mystery is something that you know, we, we don't know we're trying to figure out. Uh, mystery in the scripture is something that is being revealed. So God is revealing his glory through his church as he brings two very different groups together uh, and they find uh, a common ground in Christ. Friends, I think this is a word that's really needed for our day and it's followers of Jesus. See, either we're going to take the ministry of reconciliation that God has given us seriously and become a bridge for people in our culture, trying to bring warring parties together, trying to bring our culture together through Christ, or we're going to add to the problem. Uh, you know, and, and I, I said something there that's really important, <laughs> shocking me as well. Uh, our unity is found in Christ. You and I are never going to sit down at, at, a, at a secular, uh, you know, negotiating table and in and, our, in and of ourselves by our wisdom bring warring parties together. Our unity can only be secured in Christ. So we have the gospel. We have the most important news anyone could ever hear. And, and, and that needs to be the basis as we become, as we live out our faith in Christ missionally in our world. Wherever we go, we live out our, our faith in Christ, whether at work, school, wherever we go. We live missionally bringing people to the knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ as God uses us as his ambassadors. As we do that in our world, we have an opportunity to point the world to the hope, which is Christ. So let's pick it up at verse 11. Therefore, remember that one, yeah, that you, you, once Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the, body, by the blood of Christ." There he says, remember Ephesians. You were you were Gentiles. You were separate from God. You were excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. You were excluded from the promises. But now in Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by what? The blood of Christ. Verse 14. 
for he himself is our peace. Jesus is our peace, who has made both one, Jew and Gentile, and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Jesus has bridged the gap that separates Jew and Gentile. In other words, he in Christ, they find their commonality. They can't find, you know, whatever was dividing the, the ethnic divisions, they, they melted away in Christ. And so the, 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 the separated wall had been broken down so that now, verse 15, having abolished in his flesh, Jesus abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself, there's that phrase again, in himself, one new man from the two, thus making peace. Christ is our peace. He has abolished the flesh, and in himself he's made a new man. Verse 16, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. See, there's our commonality, whether Jew or Gentile. They were both happy to be reconciled to God by the death of Christ. And friends, it's the same for us. No matter what the ethnicity, no matter what the race, no matter what uh, you know, what we, whatever ever else we want to divide ourselves by in our culture, we all must come through Christ in order to be saved. That is what brings us together. That is what unites us. So our unity must be built around our common faith in Christ. Verse 17, and he came and preached peace to you or her who were afar off and those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. We have access to God through the Spirit of God that Jesus Christ sent to dwell within us when he ascended to the Father. It's the Spirit of God in us that points us to the finished work of the cross that reminds us that we have peace with God because of what Christ has done. Our peace is in him. We all come to God the same way. You know, Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to the Father except through him. Him. Therefore, that's where we find our unity. Verse 19, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. God has brought us into his family. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 20, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The church founded upon the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, who, who makes everything square and plumb and right. We are being built up together. Notice that term, together, in Christ, into a beautiful, holy temple in the Lord. See, what God is wanting to do through the mystery of tearing down the dividing walls that we separate ourselves by, by doing that, displaying unity to the world, he is displaying his glory to the world. Friends, Jesus said in John chapter 13 that I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. And Jesus went on to say that when we love one another, that is the evidence that we are truly his disciples. Friends, he's not calling us just to love people that look like us, think like us, vote like us. You know, and he's not calling us just to love those people that are easy to love. He's calling us to love every person that he brings into our sphere of influence as he brings the church together and unites people that are very different, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different educational levels, different economics, all of those things that we separate ourselves by in our culture. He breaks them down in Christ and reminds us that we are all the same. We all have a need to be saved. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and it's only through Christ that we are redeemed. And when we come together in the union, Unity that only Christ can bring, it is a beautiful expression of God's glory to the world. Friends, if we want to see our community saved, if we want to see people turn into Christ, if we want to see the problems in our culture beginning to be solved, it's only going to happen when the church 
decides we are going to be what God says we are. We are the family of God. And so we are not going to allow anything to separate us. We're not going to let denomination. We're not going to let race. We're not going to let ethnicity. We're not going to let any factor separate us because we are the family of God. Friends, when the church does that, when we as disciples become what God says we are, it's a beautiful, beautiful proof of the existence of Jesus Christ as Lord. So friends, today remember... As a disciple of Jesus Christ, you and I, we've been, we've been grafted into the family of God. And you and I have an opportunity today to display the unity that only Christ can bring. So friends, let's today, let's be that peace. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for your word this morning. And I just pray, God, that as we consider what it means to be a part of the family of God, as we think about how you have brought us together with, with very different people and, and, and brought us together into one family, I pray, Lord God, that we would not take that for granted. And that, God, we would seek to build on that unity. That we would seek to allow you, God, to, to use us to display your glory to a looking world. So that everyone we come in contact will, will know that we follow you and that you are Lord. Thank you so much, God, for the opportunity to be your ambassadors to represent you in our culture. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Let's go and live for Christ. God bless you.